Good morning. Hi guys. Uh, it's Monday again and I had a really nice weekend. I got a lot done. I finished a major chore last week, something that had been kind of nagging at me and I'd been picking away at it for months and I finished it. Um, yay. And the house is all together and I'm where I need to be with my yard work. And so I was able to, to kind of relax this weekend and get into some well, one thing was not so pleasant. I'm shifting over from Microsoft to iOS to Apple. And it's there's a long learning curve there. <laughs> and I had to struggle through some things on Saturday, but I think I got everything where I needed it to be. So that was a relax that I was able to relax on that too. So I had time yesterday to do a little crafting. It was an idea I had a few weeks ago. I haven't really had time to sit down and figure it all out, although I had collected the stuff. And I want to share it with you. I had such a good time with it. I'm very happy with the way things turned out. And I want to share it in case anybody else can make use of it. Um, so to do this craft, it, it's super cheap. It's one of the things that appealed to me about it. Um, I'm using Dollar Tree frames for this. So I picked up a few 5x7s um, mostly. Although the ones I really liked fit a 5x7 picture, but they already had a mat around them. And so the frame was a little bit deeper and I preferred using those. So it's not quite an 8x10 size frame, um, but it fit a bigger than a 5x7 and it gave you more to work with. So a collection of frames, and then they also had a um, some mirrors that were in frames that were more ornate. And for some of the things that I want to do this with, um, this is more appropriate. I'm looking forward to using these. So I thought I'd try it try it today with using one of those. And then you need some cork. I ordered some of these online and then I found them at Joanne. They're 12 by 12 cork tiles and they are, um, let's see, where does it say how thick they are? No, it doesn't. It, it did say if you if I ordered the same thing online the description told me how thick they were these are slightly over slightly over a quarter of an inch thick and I'm not sure which ones are gonna work for what I'm doing today the others came on a roll and they are less than a quarter of an inch thick and for the five by seven frames this is the cork that I had to use for what I'm doing. And then I use a self-healing cutting mat, and I'm a quilter, so I have these all over the place. I use a metal ruler, and then I used a utility knife. This is one by a company called Irwin, and don't tell anybody, but everybody is in my family is getting one of these and they're stocking for Christmas. It's a little bit different design ergonomically. Um, they don't know I'm saying this, but I just wanted to pass it on because I'm so impressed with these. Um, and it's, you can feel the weight of it. It You don't have to push as hard to get through a heavy piece of cardboard with this knife. Um, I've been cutting up a lot of cardboard around here because I'm unpacking things that have been stored and purging and donating and, and all of that. And so I'm cutting through a lot of boxes to get them out into the recycling. Um, but also because of the weight of it, you don't push hard when you're doing this cork. You just kind of let it glide itself through and take multiple cuts. This is the piece from the mirror. This was a mirror. And this is the piece that's going to fit back in it, I hope, um, to hold everything together. So this is what I'm going to use to measure. And I'm going to decide what part of this picture I want because it's too big. And I'm going to go for this part over here. Right. Tip this down. 
So I want this plus this over here. This would be easier to do if this were the clear glass, which is how I do the other ones, but we'll wing it. And I want more of the sky and the circus. And I'm gonna cut and I'm gonna draw around it. That's pretty good. And for this kind of trimming, I like to use a paper trimmer. This is a Daiso, we have Daiso stores here. Well, close enough anyway, not where I live, but less than an hour's drive away, I can get to a Daiso. Um, I've had multiple surgeries on my eyes and one of the um, side effects of it is that I live in kind of a Dr. Seuss world. <laughs> Things are not as straight as I would like them to be and so I like to use these trimmers to help me cut straight edges. Where was the other line? Didn't I have? Yeah, here. Yeah. I just printed these. Uh, I actually put them into a Word document so that I could play around with the sizing of it and then printed them off on plain white paper. I'll try it in here. Looks like that's gonna work. The tricky part now is to cut this because it's pretty fragile stuff and because it's been stored in a curl, it wants to stay curled. And I'm just gonna be very careful with it. And again, I'm gonna take that same thing. Oh, look, it'll fit here, yay. I'm going to line it up with this corner over here. Draw on my lines. And then I'm going to use my metal knife. Are you still seeing it? Yeah. utility knife and I'm just <coughs> letting the weight of the knife do the cutting. I'm not putting any pressure at all on this cork. And maybe you can see how it's letting go there. So that one's through. And I'm going to do the same up here. Probably would have been a good idea if I had changed out this blade. Um, I've been cutting through a lot of cardboard boxes with that blade and might have eaten up, you can kind of see the little bits of cork here. Um, it might have gone through cleaner if I had actually changed the blade. All right, now I'm going to this on here. I don't use any glue or anything. At 
least I have it on any of them yet. This is a different kind of frame than I've been using, so we're gonna see how well this works. And if it does, I'm gonna turn it this way, and I think I need to trim a little bit off probably both of them. And I'll show you why. Using that back, the back goes to where my fingers are, but the frame ends here. And so um, the frame ends, uh, um, opening ends here, it, the paper to use this outside piece here, the paper's a little too big, which means the cork's gonna be a little too big and I'm gonna have to recut that. But I'm not gonna panic, all is well. This is good, I'm getting that. Um, I'm still getting the, the big top that over here the tent over here in this, so I'm catching some of that uh, circle the banners and everything. Circle, yeah, come on, wake up. I know it's Monday and it was a relaxing weekend, but you gotta wake up. Um, the circus, I was catching some of the circus scenes down there. And I'm gonna take a minute to trim this a little bit. This will be harder to trim because it's such a small thing, it will crumble. I learned that yesterday, but again, I'm just letting the weight of the knife drag on it. here is that this piece of cork is about the same thickness as the pe the mirror that was in here and that I will be able to fit that I just have to go around and work it under these little tabs at this point. It doesn't want to stay in. I was afraid of that. Under the tab and then slide it over there. Under another tab. Maybe if I work it under this one next. One of the issues with using a dollar store frame is that they're cheap frames and they, the plastic will break if you're not really careful. I have a letter opener that I use sometimes with this stuff. Let's see if I can get a little more worsen it there. Okay. 
probably will finesse it a little bit more later, but for now that's gonna hold. So there is my backdrop. And now all I have to do is poke my little pin where I want him. And I think I'm gonna put him here because he's headed for that big tent. This is the curse of the crafter, is you look at it and say, oh, maybe I should have done it the other way. So I might, and I could go back, reprint it, make the vein, the weather vein over here, and put him over there. Might have been a little bit better balanced, but I like it fine. And I'll show you the ones I did yesterday. I did this one. It's not done. I have the um, cocoa set but I couldn't find them all I could find they they put out the pita as a separate pin and I had her but I couldn't put my hands on the rest of the family so they'll go in here eventually but this was just what the artistically one of my favorite scenes from the movie was the Marigold Bridge and the Afterlife City so I really was happy with this one. And then I, this was the first one that I did. I think this Bambi Thumper pin set is exquisite. And so I found one of the Bambi background stills. And this was one of the frames that had a mat with it. So it was a little bit bigger and the thicker um, cork fit. Now I will warn you the pins when they come through the back of the cork and they're not um, long enough to catch the pin backs. So I put on another one that I did, and I will do it on these, a, a piece of tape over these just to keep you from catching your fingers on it. I love this one. I just love it. And then I did this one. I love this one too. The, the backgrounds don't print off necessarily the way you see them, but this is fine. You can, you can see that this is the park scene from 101 Dalmatians. And what was fun with this one is that I had, the pins were all different sizes. And if you lined them up, they looked funny. It looked like the puppy, this puppy over here was a giant puppy. But by playing with the scene and playing with the dimension, the perspective on the scene, it really worked out well. It, it came out looking like they're, I mean, it's perfect. You got one in the foreground, one in the midground, and one behind. The parents are looking on indulgently. There's another pin out. I've seen it online and I haven't bought it yet of the puppies snuggled up sleeping. And I would kind of like to do those um, get those into it somehow, but it's pretty well, pretty well fixed the way it is. I really do love it. So I did all three. Once I had, <laughs> once I had all the equipment together, <laughs> that's what takes the longest is getting the stuff together to do it. Um, but once I had the stuff together, then it only took me about an hour to do all the, the other three, the Coco and the 101 Dalmatians and the Bambi. They go really fast. And the cost of each uh, dollar for a Dollar Tree frame, the, the tiles and the roll were both about the same price as I recall. I wanna say $6.99 for the roll and $7.99 for the tiles or $7.99 for the tiles and $8.99 for the roll, I don't remember. I do remember they were under $10 
and for what you got, you were going to be able to do um, more than one um, from each one. So maybe for the tiles, I think you'd be able to get it down to a dollar a picture. For the roll, maybe a little bit more expensive uh, than that, especially since I messed them up a couple of times. Um, but it's uh, obviously it's really cheap and then whatever your I am a HP instant ink people so I don't even worry about ink anymore so really just the paper hi I'm back and this is the second of the videos that I'm trying to repair um, I recorded some videos over a period of a few days just got around to looking at them last night and realized that the camera had shut down um, and cut off the end of, of all of the videos. And I'm not even gonna try to pretend that I'm going back and putting the same clothes on and making sure everything's the same. I'm just gonna tack on what I remember as being the end of those videos. One of the ones that, that cut off um, that I was kind of sorry about was the arts and craft one that I was doing and I'll tack this on to that one with the um, a way to display the pins and I had started to show some of the other ideas I have um, and got started on for doing um, some more of these displays one of them was I've already printed the background so I have uh, flora fauna and meriwether pins and i printed this one off um i think i'll probably use well i don't know what part i'll use i probably this part over here um is because they're flying here i actually have the pin here it's the box lunch pin box lunch or lunch fly yeah it's a box lunch pin um, lunch fly pin of flora fauna and Meriwether. So they'll be in the, I think I'm going to do them in the cottage, although this, these costumes are more castle appropriate, but I haven't found a castle one that I like for them yet. So probably go in here. And then I have the Zootopia set. And so I printed off the Zootopia, um, cityscape to put those on. And then finally, I'm going to Disneyland on Saturday, and I'm hoping the new Maleficent pin. I thought they would put more out with the um, October opening of the new live action um, sequel to Maleficent. Um, but, I've, but I watched the pin um, pin blog show the month by month what is supposed to be coming out, and um, it looked like there were only one or two. Um, that I would have access to. There were cast member pins, but not um, just public pins. So there is at least one, I think, that I'm gonna try to get. I'm hoping that it will fit in this little frame when I get it. And the background for that pin is going to be a piece of one of the um, thorn life stills from the thorn forest. So, um, that was really all, all I wanted to add to that, except to um, I don't know why we can't decide what our lighting is going to be in here. Um, I just I wanted to put a little disclaimer on these. I'm, I'm not recommending that anybody. Um, do these for anything other than your personal use. I'm kind of pushing the copyright by doing this as a lesson. Um, so I think that puts it under fair use. And I also, some of the stills from some of the older movies may be outside the copyright date. I think it's 72 years. Um, but I don't know that for sure. You know, I don't know those dates for sure. And I, I'm not suggesting anybody do these you know, it would be a very sellable craft, but I'm not suggesting you try to sell these because you are dealing, if you if you do these the way I've done them, we are dealing with copyrighted material. And 
it's they're not you know I'm not intending that anyone would think that these would be for resale these are just for personal use as a way to display the pins we buy from Disney so with that I hope that finishes this video um, and that I can put it together and get it up on the get it up on YouTube um, have a nice day. It's a work day for me and a work day. I work around the house. I'm retired, but I have a lot of heavy, dirty weeding and stuff to do. So I'll go get to that. See you next time.